thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Elaine, for the beautiful music. And thank you, 
uh, Jacob to bring the Christ light into the worship service. Now, these times, I'd like to invite our awesome, faithful sister Barbara Harold Johnson to do call to worship. Good morning, church. Please join me in the call to worship. The Lord has called you here this day. Lord, Lord reveal reveal doors, your doors, your purpose for us. Open your hearts to receive God's good news. Lord, make us ready to serve you. Come, let us worship God. Let us sing, sing our praises, our praises to the to Almighty One. One. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Barbara Hale Johnson. Good morning, Oxen Hill. Welcome in this virtual sanctuary. Today is the second Sunday in Lenten, not the second Sunday. Today is the fourth Sunday in Lenten. Um, we are so grateful you are here. My name is Mija Cho. I'm a pastor at Oxen Hill United Methodist Church. I am so glad to see you this morning. Oxen Hill is a multi and multi ethnic and intergenerational church that truly embody the kingdom of God. No matter who you are, no matter what skin color you have, no matter what language you speak, no matter what sexual orientation you have, no matter where you come from, we are inclusive congregation. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are new to our gathering, please raise your hands or leave your contact information in the chat feature so that we can connect with you and get to know you better. If you have a prayer concerns, please also let us know either. I pray that may God's Holy Spirit pour out upon you in this time of worship service. Now let us pray. Gracious loving God, we gather here on this day of sharing Remind us that you have shared with us your most precious gifts, our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to model our lives after his message of compassion and service to you and to all your world. God of mercy and patience, forgive us when we neglected to help others. Enlighten us again with your spirit and your word of healing, love, caring and sharing are the hallmarks, hallmarks of discipleship with Jesus Christ. So heal us and forgive us. As we see outside, we can see and smell the spring is coming. The days are getting longer. The sun's rays are higher in the sky, bringing more light to our world. Worms begins to float over the colder portion of our nations. Let the warmth of your mercy and love pour over us. As we have gathered this day to celebrate the good news that you have given to us. Remind us that it is our our aim to offer the good news to others, not only in word, but in deeds of love and mercy and peace and justice. We offer the names of our near and dear ones right now. Any physical illness, any situations which have been heavy on our heart for your healing mercies. Remind us also that we stand in need of that self same healing love. As we have prayed for ministry of peace and justice for those engaged in those wondrous missions Remind us that we are also on a journey of peace and justice 
whenever we offer comfort, aid to others. Please be with those who are seeking your helping hands, your provision. Be with us during this Lenten season. Give us a heart of great joy and courage to serve you all our days. Now, as children of God, we offer our prayers that your son taught us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespasses against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For done is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now these times, let us sing opening song together to God be the glory. the Lord to God be the glory. Now this time I'd like to invite our wonderful sister Cecile Inez and Joshi Oralo to read the scriptures. Sister Good morning Ste church. I will be reading the Old Testament from the book of Numbers chapter 21 verses 4 to 9. The bronze snake's healing power. They marched from Mount Hor on the Red Sea road around the land of Edom. The people became impatient on the road. 
the people spoke against God and Moses. Why did you bring us up from Egypt to kill us in the desert where there is no food or water? And we detest this miserable bread. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people and they bit the people. Many of the Israelites died. The people went to Moses and said, we've sinned for we spoke against the Lord and you. Pray to the Lord so that he will send the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous snake and place it on a pole. Whoever is bitten can look at it and live. Moses made a bronze snake and placed it on a pole. If a snake bit someone, that person could look at the bronze snake and live. Thank you, Sister Cecil. Um, now, these times, I'd like to invite Sister Josie Oralo to read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. Good morning, church family. I'm reading from the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. You are saved by God's grace because of your faith. The salvation is God's gift. It is not something you possessed. It is not something you did that you can be proud of. Instead, we are God's accomplishment, created in Christ Jesus to do good things. God planned for these good things to be the way that we live our lives. That is the message of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Sister Cecil and Josie Oralo. We are so blessed to have you in our worship service. Now, these times, I'd like to invite the children. So if you have children in your household, please unmute yourselves and clap your hands three times so that I can engage with children. So one, two, three. So um, thank you, Jacob. And then Christina Everson, are you there? And Melanie, are you there? Yeah, uh, brothers uh, Steve and Sister Selena, if you see children, please put the spotlight so I can engage with the children. Okay, let's see. Drew, are you there? Yes. Yeah, okay. So anybody put you. Okay. Uh, if you see the children and Krishna a person, I don't see you on the screen. And then uh, Melanie. So if you see them, you can put the spotlight. So hi, how are you? You can Good. Only... Yeah. How are you, Jacob? Good. Thank you for bringing the Christ light today. Well, today I bring the, um, this. Do you know what's this? Spoons are like measuring cups. Yes, it's a spoon. It's a measuring cups. It has, a, you know, quarter cups and half cups and one cups. What do I do with these measuring cups? When do you use these measuring cups? For cooking. For cooking, okay, good, good. Thank you, Drew. One of my favorite Bible verses begins, for God so loved the world. So I was thinking about the verse, wondering just how great God's love is and how we can measure it. So that's why this morning I brought these measuring cups to measure God's love. Okay. Sometimes when we measure in an ingredient, if I were making some cookies and I use this one, but can I measure uh, you know, with this one? No, we, I cannot use this one, but I try to measure God's love. Can I do that? Can I measure God's love with, with these measuring cups? No. No. 
Yes, you're right. I cannot measure God's love. In Psalm 23, in you know, verse 1-5, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and my cup runs, you know, runs over. Well, if our cup runs over with God's love, I guess we cannot you know, use these measuring cups to measure how God loves is. So you know when try when we try to measure God's love, we cannot use this measuring curves. Well, we cannot use this one. Do you know what's this? When you have each the back scratcher. Yeah, back scratches. <laughs> I use this one all the time when when my bag is you know eating. So I use this one. It's a back scratching, but it doesn't measure God's love. It cannot measure with it the, with these measuring curves. God's love is so big and so huge, so we cannot measure God's love. In John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world, he gave his own only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So that uh, you know, we cannot measure God's love. We don't need to, but we do need to experience God's love. So I pray that, you know, you can experience God's love. How you can experience God's love? Well, when you, when you, you know, share something with your friends and then these friends can receive God's love, even though we, you know, offer the small things and when you come to the worship service, God speaks to your heart and God loves you. Even though you make mistakes, God still loves you. No matter who you are, no matter what you have done, God loves you. We always sin against God. We promise to God that I will do better jobs and I always make mistakes. And then God still loves me. Even if I you know, did something wrong, God still forgives me. So <coughs> God's love never ending and God's mercy never ending. It lasts forever. Let me drink some copies. <coughs> so my prayer is for you today is that you may understand how I, how long, how high, how deep his love is. You know, I pray that may you experience that God's love so that, uh, you know, you can share God's love with other friends. You can ex experience God's love from your parents. God creates your parents and you and all of the people. So remember, God loves you always and God forgives you always. Shall we pray together? <clears throat> Dear God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Sometimes we don't know how you know, your love is. We cannot measure your love, but be with us and guide us to experience your love and uh, make us to share your love with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <coughs> thank you guys. Thank you for joining the uh, children's time. Now, these times, I'd like to invite Drew Campbell Adams, our awesome news, to read the gospel reading, John chapter 3, verse 14 and 21. They're our you know, favorite scriptures. Okay. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the human one be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but have eternal life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him isn't judged. Whoever doesn't believe in him is already judged because they don't believe in the name of God's only son. This is the basis for judgment. The light came into the world and people loved the darkness more than the light for their actions were evil. All who do wicked things hate the light and don't come into the light for fear that their actions will be exposed to the light. Whoever does the truth comes to light 
so that it can be seen that their actions were done in God. Thank you so much. Thank you for the wonderful readings. Uh, we are so blessed to have you in our worship service. Now let us sing together the musical selection, The Power of Your Love.
Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Sister Elaine. Now let us pray. Mighty God, we want to rise up like eagle wings as we come together to receive your word of healing, restorations, and blessings. Speak to each of us. Feel us. Pour out your spirit upon in this virtual sanctuary. Visit our heart to receive your healing, your strength. And may the word of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be pleasing in your sight so that we can come close to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In today's gospel, Jesus speaks about the bronze snake and gives us one of the most famous verses in the whole New Testament. In John chapter 3, verse 16. So anyone remember can recite John chapter 3, verse 16? Raise your hands. I guess all of you, you know that John 3, 16, right? Well, I will give you some background how these words came up. Nicodemus was a devout Pharisee and a member of Jewish Sanhedrin, the governing body of the Jews in Israel. At the time of Jesus, he was a man who was thirsty for the truth and he wanted to meet Jesus. He heard that he healed the sick, cast out the demons, and fed more than 5,000 people. So he really wanted to meet Jesus. However, he was afraid of being seen associating with Jesus. So he came to Jesus at night and asked, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again above. But Nicodemus could not understand Jesus saying, you must be born again above so jesus explained in verse 14 just as moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness so the son of man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him for god so loved the world that he gave his one one son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So let me ask you a question. What is the relationship between the snake in the wilderness and being born again? What is the relationship between the snake in the wilderness and being born again above? We hear about the snake in the Old Testament numbers, chapter 21, verse four through nine. The people of Israel traveled into the desert following Moses. After much wandering, they eventually lost their patience with the leadership of life and hardship of life in the wilderness. So they complained and murmured to Moses and God saying, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? 
for there is no food, no water, and we detest this miserable food. Well, when they complained about water in the wilderness, God provide abundant water from rock. When they grumbled about the food, God provided them with manna. When they despaired for lack of meat, God caused flocks of quail to fly into their camp. However, the people still wanted to go back to slavery in Egypt. They spoke against God and against Moses in response to the claim, in a complaining, God did not send them back to slavery. Instead, God sent poisonous snakes among the people to bite them. Many of them had painful bites and some of them died. So they repented and begged Moses to pray on their behalf. Moses, prayed to God and God instructed Moses to make image of a poisonous snake and set it on a pole and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't like snakes. If you like snakes, raise your hands. Who likes snakes? Oh my God, Melissa, you like snakes? <laughs> wow, let's see who likes snakes. I don't like it. <laughs> oh, can you, you like snakes? Wow. <laughs> wow, I don't like it. This is very bizarre to me. I don't know why I, I don't like it. What an odd comparison. A compassionate and caring, loving Jesus with a bronze poisonous snake. Ugh. What does it mean to us? But I want to say to you, please don't read the scripture literally here. I, had, I heard that some churches in West Virginia or Indiana, they put the snakes inside sanctuary and test these kind of things. Don't do that. This is about the singing, about the revealing human sin. In Numbers, God requires the Israelites to, to look up in order to live. In John, Jesus requires Nicodemus to be born again in order to, to see the kingdom of God. We must look upon our human nature at the monstrous things sin has conjured. Human sins have wrought the thing we fear most, the thing that will surely kill us if God's mercy does not intervene. It surely kills us when we don't acknowledge our poisonous sin that chokes us and causes us suffering and death. The poison of hatred, the poison of selfishness, the poison of racism, the poison of violence, the poison of judgment. Without God's mercy and grace, who can save us? Who can save us? Jesus became the antidote to the poisons we make. Jesus became the instrument by which pain and death and suffering are transformed into healing and new life force. So in order to be saved, we must look up with art, what harms, what breaks, what poisons and kills us. We must look in order to live. Otherwise we will all die. The Israelites must see their failure to trust God. 
the one who delivered them out of Egypt from their slavery. God is the sustainer who provide water and manna in the desert and pro, you know, provide everything they need and promise to guide them to the promised land. The message of this text is about our need to give ourselves over to the provision and mercy of God. When Moses raised up Cooper's serpent, the snake for the people to look and be healed, they were no longer focusing on themselves. They didn't focus on the stormy sea or high waves of their life troubles. Instead, they focused on God who rescued, who sustained them. And God wanted them and want us to be free from our sin. This is an invitation of healing and restorations in Jesus Christ. As we accept this invitation of love and grace, we will be made new. We will be forgiven. This reveals the truth of God's love on a cross. This love also invites us to look beyond the poisonous snakes and the cross that gives us eternal joy and happiness. This love does not end death and suffering, but it invites us to experience resurrections beyond the death and suffering. So the cross of Jesus Christ is not about the condemnations and judgment. Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 17 through 18, it says, indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world. But in order that the world might be saved through him. It is about salvations. It is an invitation of new life in Christ. It is invitation to eternal life that no one and nothing can deny us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You know, Jesus was born into our human brokenness and revealed our shame. Jesus revealed the poisons that kills us. On the cross, Jesus proves God's love for us. When the Son of Man is lifted up, we see our need for God's mercy. When we see the serpent, the snake on a pole, we see the poison made of the hatred, pride, violence, indifferences to God's children. Being lifted up and singing, we are invited by God to experience the means of grace. So what is the snake in our lives today? What of the poison of the COVID-19 virus that afflicts us physically, emotionally, relationally, and spiritually. We must focus on God in order to live. In this season of Lent, the cross invites us to look up, to reorient ourselves, to realign our lives with God, and to depend upon God fully. It invites us to admit that there is a poison in our lives that kills us. But God enduring love and mercy keeps God's promise 
to us. So we must respond to God with perfect obedience, listening to and embodying God's teaching. God became one of us and suffered the death on a cross in order to keep God's covenant with us. It is God's steadfast promise. Just as Nicodemus finally had the courage to obey and look up, we need to realign ourselves to God's mercy. If we focus too much on these life struggles, we may not allow ourselves to experience true love that God offers to us in Jesus Christ. True hope and joy that are visible only when we look into the face of God. Looking up is about the commitment. It is about the commitment to rise above ourselves and welcome Christ into the center of our being. Looking up means hope, love, joy, and redeeming grace in Jesus Christ. In Hebrew chapter 2, Jesus is the pioneer and perfect of our, our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross. So when we are in trouble, let us look up to the one who is the antidote to the poisons that afflict us. Let us look up the one who saves us, who redeems us, who restores us, who loves us. So let us look up to Jesus. And Jesus invites us to experience the means of grace. So will you look up and live? Will you? I want to share with you some video with you.
Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending us your only son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sin, became the breezy builder between God and humanity. Thank you for your unending love and grace. Make our eyes upon Jesus. Help us to realign our lives with you, the source of our strength and hope. Help us to surrender our lives to you so that we can be renewed by your unending mercy. There are many poisonous snakes in our lives that we often give our allegiance to the snake that chokes us, that causes us to suffer and pain, that eventually led us into death. The poison of greed, the poison of selfish, the poison of complacency, the poison of judgment of others, the poison of unwillingness to change, the poison of unwilling to accept the others as your beloved children. O oh God, forgive us, heal us, restore us. By your stripes, we are healed. Let our face glorify you and make us look up so that we can experience abundant grace and blessings. The bridge builder, our savior, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today, we are so grateful to God to have a major Zechariah old layer to share a mission moment in the community and in our worship service. Uh, he is the commander of District 4, which is PG County Police Department. Oxen is seek to come in a connect with the community and then makes gospel relevant in our daily lives. We want to be a bridge builder with the community. We want to be an agent of healing, mercy, and peace and justice. Without connection, we, we cannot do anything to make a difference. So we are so grateful for an you know, amazing and Jukara's uh, his service in the community and we want to make a community better place. So please welcome Major. Uh, would you educate me how to pronounce your name? Uh, yes, Reverend, it's uh, Major Zachary O'Lare. Zachary O'Lare, thank you yes. so much. Yes, well, uh, thank you, Reverend. Uh, it, is, it is great to be here this morning. Um, outstanding message, uh, by the way. Uh, I got a lot out of that. Um, you know, now more than ever, um, the police department and the community uh, need to, to build on partnerships. Um, as we see it, across the country, um, the level of trust uh, for police officers um, has, has definitely diminished. Um, and, you know, in order to keep the community safe, uh, the police need to be a part of the community. Uh, you know, we can't just uh, come to work in that community and then go home. Uh, we need to understand the, the cultures within, uh, you know, we need to live within that community uh, and we need to partner and, and um, you know, do things uh, together in collaborative effort, uh, especially with these children, um, you know, just to, to eradicate that fear uh, that a lot of people in the community have of police officers, uh, you know, they have the ability to show that, you know, we're human and, and we, uh, uh, have our own churches and we go to your churches too. Uh, you know, there's many officers that, that work in the district uh, four station, which is uh, where I'm a commander of that, that belong to churches within district four and they live also within district four. Um, so I appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, be a part of today's service. Uh, with COVID right now, um, a lot of our partnership efforts are uh, on hold until, you know, uh, we can hopefully uh, get rid of uh, this pandemic. Uh, and then, you know, once that happens, then uh, setting up events with our community police officers and your church uh, and churches in the area is something that, that we're going to start doing again. Um, 
you know, I appreciate uh, everybody being on here. And, you know, there's still many ways to, to do things in the community um, with the police department. And, and we're looking at some of those ideas. Uh, and we'd love to, uh, when we have something, uh, you guys be the first ones that we reach out to. Um, you know, as far as, as far as crime right now, um, in the Oxen Hill area, I can just give a brief uh, overview of, of that. Um, we are experiencing some rise in violent crime recently. Uh, it's mostly uh, inside the Beltway. Um, and it's a lot of our same suspects are from uh, the Washington DC area. And that, what I think is causing that is a lot of these kids are have nothing to do right now. Uh, and the boredom is driving them to go out and commit these crimes. Um, so uh, we look forward to, to partnering together and, and building on that relationship. And I, again, just want to say thank you for letting me be a part of today's service, uh, which was outstanding. And I will provide uh, everybody, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put my email in the chat. So if anybody has any questions, any concerns in their community, uh, please feel free to, to send me an email um, and then you know, I can, I can help you and your community uh, eradicate some of the problems you might be having. Well, thank you so much to be here with us and share the, in a moment. Yes, definitely we look forward to working with you, have a partnership with you to make our community a better place. We want to be a bridge builder as like a Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, when I inspected the community, uh, walk around the East Over Shopping Center. One of officers make sure that you know the one of you know, the um, people crossed in you know, the you know, the uh, road that they don't in you know, hit by car because now people using the cell phone and texting during the you know driving. That you know we you know sometimes we lose you know precious people. So you know it's small. It's kind of this kind of works for you are doing. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to work with you in the future and then make this community a better place. So we try to understand better and have a relationship. With you. So thank you so much, yeah. Major. Thank you so much. And then I, uh, I have entered my uh, email address into the chat. So if anybody wants to write that down, put it on the fridge. If you ever have any questions or uh, issues that are of concern, please feel free to send me an email. Thank you. So we are created in Christ Jesus for good works, and this is his uh, God's gifts to us. So let us now to the loving and good work of giving our, our gifts back to God. So let us bring our gifts and thanksgiving to celebrate God's love and God's wonderful works to humankind. We give in many different ways. Uh, first, we give via PayPal, you can visit our website to give. And second, we give cash app. Brother Steve will put the cash app on chat feature. Third, you can mail your checks to the church. And also you can give tax gift to 1877-718-7764. Or you can visit the in a, in a, um, onechurchsoftware.com. You can make pledge in one church software. The information when you can see yourselves and the pastor and then in you know, the finance secretary and treasurer. So nobody can see your, your information. I just want to assure that while we are giving our faithful brother many Lagaspi will do those special songs. Brother Manny, are you ready? Yes, yes. Okay. Children, we will dream of Easter morn, all candies and toys we knew we found, but we never realize the Lord has come for us to say, God gave us him, his only son. He are the reason, He 
gave his life. We were the reason that he suffered and died to a world that was lost. He gave all he can give. Show us the reason to live. As the year went by, we learned more about the gifts, the giving of ourselves and what that means. On a dark and cloudy day, a man hang crying in the rain because of love, because of love. We were the reason that he gave his life. We were the reason that he suffered and died. To the world that was lost, he gave all he can give to show us the reason to live. Finally found the reason for living is in giving every part of my heart to him in all that I do and the world that I say I will give all my life just for him just for him we are the reason that he gave his life we were the reason that he suffered and died and the world that was lost he gave all he can give to show us the reason to live The reason to be what you know, you know, the reason that he came, came, came to save us when he gave his life for us. He suffered and died. The world that was lost, he gave everything he had. He's to show us the reason to live. Amen, amen. Let us pray. Great and generous God, we give thanks to you for your unending mercy and love. You are the reason we live in this world. As we return our gratitude to you, the tithes and offering we share with you this day, a way of keeping us focused not on, on the things that would take life away, but we will renew our lives, our hope, our compassion, our empathy. As, as the Israelites look to a, a serpent on a pole for healing, we look to Savior on a cross to be brought back to life the bridge builder, Jesus Christ. We pray, amen. Now let us sing Luke and Live together.
Thank you so much, Sister Elaine. Uh, before I give you benedictions, I just want to highlight the mission and ministry of the church. Uh, right after service, immediately following the service, we will have a trusty committee meeting. So, Brother Manny and Brother, uh, you know, Joshim, you know, Oralo, please uh, talk to your husband to come to the meetings. And also, we have a youth gathering tonight, 6 p.m. via Zoom. Wednesday Bible study, and also one more thing, dance class are starting next week, you know, this coming week, Thursday, 1 p.m. Uh, you know, the, there's a fee, you can donate the $10 uh, for, you know, the Sister Donna, a person, since, you know, this pandemic, the you know, small business is uh, hurting, so we can help some each other together. And also when you have Zoom fatigues, uh, you can you know, learn some moves and have fun together. So please join the Thursday 1 p.m. Um, Coffee and Theology next Sunday and church council meeting. Uh, all meetings is under in the bulletins. Um, if you have any questions and then uh, uh, send me emails. Now the oxen here, receive God's blessings. Jesus became our antidote for our sin on a cross. So let us show our obedience to God's commands. Let us realign our lives to God, to God's unending love, so that we can be blessed and be a blessing to others. Let us depart to live lives of grace and to do good works, as God has shared the best with you. Now you are challenged to go forth to share your blessing with others. May the peace and love of God go with you always and forever. Amen. Well, would you uh, greet our uh, Cochrane Preschool team, uh, Debbie Hong, Melissa, uh, Wilma, uh, there's many people are here, so show the, your hospitality to them and also show your hospitality major, uh, Jekariah, Jekariah, I'm sorry, <laughs> please educate me. Oh, <laughs> oh, rare. So, so if you have time, chance, please uh, 